Hi friends, this is Tony from Historic American Homes back again with another episode in our project of creating a small home inspired by mid-century modern design using SketchUp Pro and Layout. And today I'm going to talk about stairs. Now in our project house we've been looking at, it's a single story house and there are no stairs. However, you may be planning to do a multi-level house, in which case you're going to need to include stairs. And that means you need to plan for their location, the amount of floor space they take up right from the start when you're doing your initial layout. I have found that many people who have not had enough experience in this area tend to underestimate the amount of space a proper staircase actually requires, not just the space on the bottom level, but how much floor opening on the upper level has to be uh, cut open in order to accommodate the headroom necessary for a staircase. So I thought a video covering stair, the basics of stair layouts would be in order. Okay, so let me get my notes here and you can see my notes while I'm talking. Purpose of this video, explain what you need to know to provide enough floor space in your design for an initial stair layout. We are not going to get into all the fine details of stair design in this video because that warrants more than another, more than one video in addition. So we'll stick to the basic layout information. This is all based on the International Residential Code 2018, which is usually abbreviated RIC 18. And this is the, the building code that is generally adopted all over the United States. Every jurisdiction adopts, its own, creates its own code, but the vast majority base it on the International Residential Code. And 2018 is the most recent version of that. The chapter in question is 311 and the section is 0.7. You'll find a link in the description for a copy of uh, the code on the internet, which you can get to for free. And then let's see, stair jargon, riser. Well, I'm gonna pull up some other staircases that I've got here and point at things while we talk. Okay, riser, that's the face of the tread. The tread is the whole combination of riser and tread step. So it, the, the word tread actually has two meanings. There's riser for the front and tread for the horizontal surface you step on. But this whole assembly is called a tread. Uh, nosing is the little bit that sticks out at the front of the step here. You may or may not have that. It's not required. Handrail is what you actually grip when you walk up or down the stairs as opposed to guardrail, which prevents you from falling off the steps. Guardrails are by code are required to be a certain height, which is different than handrail height. So there's two separate things to be aware of. Winders. Let's see if I have a winder in here anywhere. Yeah, here are some winders. A winder is a subcategory of tread. So the difference with a winder is that the back edge and the front edge are not parallel. There are specific requirements regarding winders. And winders are not to be confused with spirals. So here's a spiral, and you'll see the main difference is that a spiral practically comes to a point. Spiral stairs are, in fact, a whole separate design problem, which, again, I'm not going to cover in this video. They have their own separate section in, in Chapter 311.7, and I'll probably do one on, on spiral stairs at some point. In addition, alternating tread devices, ship ladders, and ramps, they're each, sub, they're each their own distinct type of vertical egress and each has their own separate rules. Uh, again, I'm not going to cover those here. I'll probably do future videos on those specific ones, but I'm going to focus today on conventional stairs, which includes treads, winders, and landings. Code says that the width has to be 36 inches minimum. I'm going to bring up the code page here. Uh, 311.7 width. The, the clear width at and below the handrail can be less than 36 inches, three and 31 and a half. So the handrail is allowed to project into the 36 inch space. Things like skirting boards can make your tread a little bit narrower than 36, but above the handrail height, you have to have at least 36 inches available, open. I usually design around 38 just to give myself a little leeway for wall finishes. Once you put some sheetrock on, 
and maybe some uh, wood moldings and things, you don't want to find yourself a fraction under. So I use 38, but 36 is code. Riser, the maximum height for a riser is seven and three quarters inches. That's an absolute, you can't go more than that. So um, I'll give you some, and the maximum tread is 10 inches, but I, I mean, the minimum tread is 10 inches, but I recommend thinking in terms of 10 and a half as a minimum. You run into some issues with 10 that can cause problems. So, and it's also less comfortable to walk on. So 10 and a half is my minimum tread distance. It's what I use for planning the majority of staircases and seven and three quarters is the riser. Landings, <clears throat> by code, the landing is supposed to be the width of the staircase. However, um, it's a little bit unclear whether it, if you have a staircase that's wider than average, say 42 inches, three and a half feet, if the landing has to be three and a half feet or if it's enough for the landing to be three feet, I have found there's a little bit of uh, variability in how some people, how some building departments interpret that code. If you want to be conservative, make your landing depth, that would be the distance from the top of the stair to whatever wall is beyond it, parallel to that top riser. Make that the width of your staircase or more if you want to be conservative. If you've got a wider staircase, if your staircase is 36 inches, you're fine. The landing has to be 36 inches. Can't be any less than 36. So when it comes to laying out your staircase, um, here's a couple of guidelines for you. You've got a typical ceiling heights are eight foot, nine foot, and sometimes you see 10 foot. Of course, you can go on, and on up from there. But assuming that you're gonna be probably in that range of eight, nine, or 10 feet. Now that's the height from the floor to the ceiling. You have to account also for the thickness of the floor framing above. When you do that, you'll find that you need 15 risers for an eight foot ceiling, 16 risers for a nine foot ceiling and 18 risers for a 10 foot ceiling. That's generally true. If you have extremely deep floor framing for some reason, you might have to add a riser. So you will need to do the math, but assuming your floor framing is around 12 inches deep, these um, figures here will work for you. So let's go into a SketchUp model I've got started here. I've got all kinds of miscellaneous staircases I've been playing with over the last few months. And I've done an initial uh, layout here. What I have is a, a ground floor, that's this piece here, and an upper floor, and there's a wall uh, adjacent. I've indicated the um, landing at the top, and then I created a rectangle, R for rectangle, measuring 10 and a half inches by 38 inches. I made a little rectangle and I copied it over M for move, control to turn M to copy. I've copied it over so that I have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16 risers. So that was what I needed for a nine foot ceiling. And if I check the height here, my height is nine foot one inch. And my floor framing is another one and three quarters, one foot, three quarters of an inch. So 16 risers. That uh, gives me a horizontal distance of 13 feet, one and a half inches, and a width of three feet, two inches. So that there is actually the, mo the most efficient floor area. That's the smallest possible floor area you can really fit a standard staircase into. Um, now I'm going to show you how you can take that and treat it as a, in, in three-dimensional space because one of the, some of the things you're going to want to need to figure out how high to make your riser. You don't have to do the math if you don't want to. There's a, a way to do it within SketchUp. Also, the opening above your head, I've got it completely open at this point, but let's suppose that we have some stuff going on up above and we're going to need to come around here and we want to know how big to make this opening. So these are the things we're going to look at. So to make this staircase, we're going to use a combination of components and groups. A uh, quick review, I've grouped, um, I've got a four lines and a face here. I double clicked on, triple clicked on it, that selects everything. I'm going to mouse over it. No, just double click, right click, make component. That's turning it into a single entity component. We'll call that tread 001. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on it, that component, P for push pull, click on the face, pull up, type one, enter, and escape. Now that is one inch thick, and that is a, a stair tread. And when I make copies of this stair tread, if I change any of the copies, they will all change the same way. That's the difference between a component and a group. A component uh, is um, repeatable like that. So let me make a copy of this. Now I'm going to use M for move, control to turn move into copy, and then I'm going to drag it over, click once where I want to end it, and then type times 14. That makes 14 copies. And I'm going to take these 14 copies, select them all, and I'm going to group these copies. I'm going to combine them all into one group. So I've got them all selected. I'm going to right click, make group. I'm making this a group instead of a component because I don't anticipate making lots of copies of this, which I will want to edit all the same way. I only need one version, so I only need a group. Now I'm going to do the next thing. I'm going to scale this. You'll see that these steps are one inch high, which is obviously ridiculous, but this is why I made it one inch. S for scale. Click on that central little cube there. Right click, left click once. Raise my mouse up. I'm not clicking, I'm just going to hover over that corner. Now if I look in the bottom right corner of my screen, it says 8.12. It's telling me that it will scale this 8.12 times. Since my starting point was a 1 inch thick tread, that means these treads are 8.12 inches thick. That is too high for a tread. It needs to be no more than 7 and 3 quarters. So I need one more tread. I'm going to escape. I'm going to go into the group. Double click on it, click for click, select one, M for move, control for copy. Now I have one more tread. Now I'm going to repeat that scale command, S for scale. Click, click. And if I look in the bottom right corner, it says 7.61. That's the height of my tread. Less than seven and three quarters inches. We're doing fine. I didn't have to pull out the calculator and do the math. Uh, it would have been some very weird number anyway let's see what it is t for tape measure 7 and 39 60 fourths so now if we look at what's going on at the top tread we'll see that the top tread this one right up here is actually the landing upstairs landing and that's a part of the actual floor so when we get ready to to do the detailing of this what we're going to do is go inside our stair our stair group and delete that top tread and the landing itself will take the place of it but I needed that tread in order to scale this up properly to reach that level. So uh, now that we've got that in place, we can check another uh, important dimension here, which is headroom. The code says that we need 311.7 stairways, 7.2 headroom, not less than six feet, eight inches measured vertically from the slope line adjoining the tread nosing so a sloped line adjoining the tread nosing. If I do L for line, I'm going to click on this tread here. And I'm going to click on a tread up here. That's a line that lines up with the stair nosing. I'm going to select that line. And I'm going to raise it vertically 6 foot 8 inches. Actually, that's 80 inches. Now, 6 foot 8 is the minimum headroom. And so... If I do six foot eight and then discover that I have forgotten to put sheetrock on my ceiling and that's a half inch thick, I've got a problem. I don't have enough headroom. So I like to give myself another inch or two to spare. So instead of six foot eight, which is the minimum by code, I'm going to put in my model six foot ten. Six foot ten inches, enter. And I can now have, so that line is a parallel line. A line is parallel to the nosings and six feet ten inches above the nosing. And I can now judge, and I happen to hit it right on, which I didn't plan, whether I've got um, enough space. Let's suppose that I had that. I'd look at that and I'd say, oh, I have a problem. I don't have enough headroom. From here on over, I don't have enough headroom. Now, I can, I can judge that because I've got this reference line. So I can take this and I can push it back some distance. I could snap right to it. That's going to give me some funny dimension. Let's see. 
feet for tape measure, four feet and a quarter of an inch. So I don't like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to make it a nice round number and call it 48 inches, four feet. I'm going to use my push pull command, snap to that line, and now I've got exactly four feet, and I've got, and I've cleared my headroom. I gave myself an extra two inches of headroom, so if, if need be, I can make adjustments. We now have a stair that meets code as far as its width, the tread, the riser, and the headroom. Those are the most important dimensions that you're going to need for planning the space you want in your design for your stair. When it comes time to actually designing the stair in detail, there'll be other things to consider. But now you've got enough information to provide the space on it in your floor plan. In terms of floor area, a straight run of steps like this is the most uh, efficient arrangement you can have. However, it may not, it may not be uh, the arrangement you want because it may be that it doesn't put you in the right spot at the top or the bottom. And maybe you decide you need some other shapes such as an L or a U. Uh, let's do a quick, uh, let's do a quick staircase that is um, U-shaped. I'm going to copy one of these little rectangles over. Now I've set, I've set the distance from this wall to three foot two inches. So this is going to be where I'm creating a landing. And I, my staircase is going to start down here somewhere, go up to a landing and loop around and continue on up. And I think for good measure, I'll put one step in the landing area as well. So that's that rectangle there marks our landing. We're going to make some copies of it. M, M control for copy. Click on the first corner, click on the second corner, and then I will make, say, times six, six of them. That gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven risers. Now let me make another copy over here. Q for rotate, click at the center point, click along one edge, rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to move it over. That'll be my step up to my next landing. So I need to make, multiply that by two. Oops, let me do that again. Move from here to here. Now multiply that by two. Oh, never mind, just make a second one. That's going to be my second landing. And then Q for rotate, control to make the rotation a copy. Rotate. I'm going to move and make some more copies. M control, we'll make about six of those. So let me see how many risers do I have now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 risers. We'll leave it at that. I, can I do it with 16? I think I can do it with 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I can do it with 16 risers. But I need this one. This represents the floor up above. So this doesn't count as a riser, this edge. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is the last riser. This is the floor up above. Now I'll do the same steps I did over here. In fact, yeah. I, in fact, I can just copy one of these because it's going to be exactly the same size. So control C to copy it. And let's move the copy over here. I'm going to M control copy times two, three, four, five, six. This step is actually going to become a landing. S for scale. That's my landing. I'm going to grab this step and I'm going to copy it up here. Now, actually, I need to pay attention here. When I get ready to do more detail on these steps, I'm going to be adding a nosing. This face is the same as this face. And that's where the nosing is going to get added on. So I want to rotate. I want to move this so that it's oriented the way 
I'd like it to be in the end. When I get ready to change my component and put nosings on them, I want the nosing to be on the correct face on all of them. Make another copy of that, bring it up here. Q to rotate. Now that's the landing. That's good. That's going to become a landing. I'm going to pull out this way. Make another copy, lift it up, rotate this one. This becomes the first step in the next run of stairs. 90 degrees. And again, I've got my faces oriented so that the, when I make the nosing, it'll come out here. And I'll make some copies of that. Two, three, four, five, six. I think I need one more. Okay, and this one is actually going to be part of the floor up above. So now that I've got that laid out, T for tape measure. I'm going to go back in here, draw a line down, pull that out. That's my floor up above. Now let's just, let me show you about how to make this component stair component with a with a nosing. We'll do one one down here. We'll wrap the nosing around the front and the side. And you'll see that when we do that, it also wraps it around the correctly oriented faces, front and side. However, it's going to make some little weird business in the corner. The landings are going to be a little odd. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take the two landing pieces And I'm going to make those unique. Right click, make unique. Now those are now a different component than my regular steps. So they're not going to get changed when I edit the stair component. You'll see that nothing happens to the landing. Okay, double click in my component. I'm going to select these top two edges. I'm going to M for move, control for copy. And I'm going to copy them down one inch. I will use P for push pull. And I will pull and notice what's happening to all the steps except the landing. I'll pull it out three quarters of an inch. And I'll pull this side out and see what's happening there. Three quarters of an inch. Point circle five. Now I have my stair treads with the nose wrapping around two sides. And note that it did not wrap around this side, just as it did not on this side. Now before I forget, I think I will. Do the same on the landing, but just in one direction. I'm not wrapping it around. And you can see that this one got um, a nosing too. I'm going to, let's see, the distance from the nosing to the wall is 38 and three quarters of an inch. I need to extend this out. 38 and three quarters. Should line up with this. Scale. S for scale. All right, I have a little problem there. Oh, I see what I need to do. I need to pull this stair over. This point should align with that. There we go. Okay, now it's all in order. I have my stair with two runs, uh, two landings, and, uh, and a step in between. So that's a, that's a possible arrangement that may work for your project. That, give, that requires seven foot two and a half by nine foot three and a half. Okay, so I'm not going to go on to any other arrangements. We could do an L shape. We could do a, a switchback stair with no step in the landing. But I'm going to just show you that what um, in looking at this, I, I come up with an idea that would save a little floor space. Now, the, the first run of steps has one, two, three, four, five, six treads. The, the top run has one, two, three, four, five, six treads. 
and then that would count as like a seventh tread. Now we have uh, X set, we have more headroom here than we need. If we were to do our um, do our headroom line and move it up up the wall six foot ten inches, we see that we've got excess headroom up here. What I could do is, oh, I should group all of these first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, after I've put, put them all in a group, I am going to raise this whole staircase and I'm going to have, I'm going to take a step off the bottom and take a step off the top and add a step to the bottom so I can, I can M for move, click on that edge and lift it up. All right, now I've got an extra step up top, which I'll get rid of and I need one more at the bottom. So double click into the group. Select one, M, control, copy. Now I've got one at the bottom, and I can get rid of the one at the top. And that means that my the opening in my floor can get a little bit smaller. It takes up a little less space upstairs. And let's see what it does as far as headroom. Let's see now. We have L for line. I'll click there, and I'll click there. And I'll move it up. Six feet ten inches, and you see we're still clear. We haven't uh, run into any problems up here, but we look like we're pretty much at the limit. If I try to do that one more time, I'll run into a headroom issue. So this um, saves us a little space upstairs, gains us a little space upstairs, shrinks the size of the opening a little bit. Um, so that uh, that's a way to use uh, this tool to uh, sketch up to help you, you know, gain a little space there. The other things we could try doing, maybe we decide we want to try doing just a straight switchback, get rid of the step between the two landings, bring this one down, make a single landing. If we do that, we will have lost two risers. We'll have to add two more risers. We can do that just by moving these pieces around. Anyhow, I think this video is getting long enough, and I think we've covered what you need to determine more accurately the amount of space you're going to need in your floor plan to accommodate um, a proper run of stairs. Let's do a quick check on the actual floor areas uh, that each of these occupies. I'm going to group this and I'm going to group this. So that they're separate. Okay, this one here, let's do a rectangle covers that area, covers that floor area. Double clicked on it. Single click on it and I've got the face selected. I can go up to Entity Info and it tells me I've got a face and it has a, an area of 41.56 square feet. That's a handy little uh, thing to be aware of if you want to check a quick er, quickly check an area. It only works if you've got just the face selected. As soon as you get the edges selected as well, if you go up to Entity Info, you'll see it says five entities and since some of them are lines, it's not giving you a square foot um, calculation. So 41.56. Now let's do the same for this staircase. It extends from this corner to actually, yeah, well, we'll, we'll say right to there. And that face measures 60, almost 67 square feet. So you can see that this staircase takes up considerably more space than this one. However, it has its own uses because it drops you back off where you want to, uh, maybe where you want to be, depending on the floor plan you have in mind up above. And like I said, you could make an L shape, you can make a U shape, uh, many different arrangements. But that gives you what you need in order to plan your own staircase for your own house. Well, I hope you like this. I hope you uh, click, click like, click subscribe, come back for more. I'll be doing more videos on staircases and we will be continuing with the design of our mid-century modern home in the next video. Thanks a bunch. Have a great day.